Okay, well, I'll start off with the Purdue game. <laughs> we did play a football game this past week, and uh, really proud of our kids. Uh, you know, we, we had a tough day, you know, game against uh, Penn State. And really didn't play well. And, uh, you know, we knew it. You know, coaches knew we didn't coach well. We didn't play well. You know, it was just one of those deals. And you see it all the time in college football, and I think that the true measure of really a, a football team is really, are you going to bounce back? And uh, I didn't realize that they had homecoming until about two days before that. Uh, you know, and of course, having homecoming on the December, usually that's pretty good scheduling. Uh, or you're trying to do a pretty good schedule by looking at date and making the alums happy. Uh, so, uh, you know, I thought those kids at Purdue, you know, watched them on the sidelines. They were really excited. But I thought we took the steam out. I thought our kids went out there and played absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, they uh, they had held Wisconsin and Nebraska to under 100 yards rushing. And so our jogging, our uh, rushing offense, uh, we went out and put up 382 just to prove a point to everybody. Uh, but I thought our kids, uh, I just, just thought our kids played well. You know, we talk a lot about answering scores. I think the, the answer what we had, uh, they went down and scored at 27 and uh, uh, we come back there and we, we score right before a half. Uh, I thought that set the, the, the tone really well. Uh, missed assignments were way down. Uh, drop passes were way down. Uh, our intensity level I thought was outstanding. And uh, I, give them, I give them a lot of credit. I also like what will happen after the game. Our kids were excited, uh, but they were looking forward to the next challenge. And uh, it wasn't uh, like in past years where you win a game and it was Everybody was uh, was too excited like you haven't done it before. I think our kids are, are starting to feel a little bit better there. Um, playing an Ohio State game uh, team, um, they're they're pretty good. They're real good. Uh, they got great talent. You know they do a good job coaching. Their schemes are outstanding. Uh, there's a reason why they're ranked number one in a lot of polls and number two. Uh, they're uh, they're an outstanding football team. Great representative of uh, the Big Ten. And uh, you know it's it's going to be a heck of a challenge for us. Uh, we, I don't think we lost anybody uh, Saturday. Um, you know, I could think, I think you could look at uh, seeing what the Josh Ferguson, you know, what he meant, what he means to this football team. And uh, not that we're going to get that great perform performance every single week, but I just thought our kids were, uh, were you know, were energized. Uh, you know, just, uh, just really like uh, what we saw, and I, you know, like what I saw in my, our coaches. Um, you know, our fans who were there. Uh, we're pretty excited, and it's good to see that Wine Nation uh, was uh, was excited after the game. Okay, now. <laughs> when when did you hear, Bill? When did you hear all this? This morning. What was your reaction? Um, you know, I guess I've been in this business so long. You know, you just uh, you, you you take a step back. Uh, you know, Mike, just like everybody else around here, has been really good to me. I cannot, I cannot, in three years here, say that I've had one bad experience with uh, with anybody here. And, and uh, of course, Mike was uh, part of it. So, uh, and then the first thing you do is you, you hear, and then it really goes back. If you're a true educator, you're a true uh, coach, the first thing that comes back to you is, okay, what do I got to do for these these uh, the student athletes? So. Uh, to be honest with you, after, after it happened, I had a staff meeting. Uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, it was real quick. Went back there, go back on that tape, you know, because you got to give your, your student athletes the best, the best chance at it. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's just, it's the way it is. I mean, I guess the older you get, you know, the, the, you understand. You don't, I should say, you really don't understand, you accept, and you go up, you go about your business, and uh, you do the best you can for those players, because if it wasn't for the players, if it wasn't for the students, none of us adults would have any jobs, so that that's our responsibility. What was the theme of the staff meeting? Well, we didn't in the staff meeting, no, it's, uh, you know, afterwards, because uh, it, was, it was real, uh, real brief uh, when I was told. We had a staff meeting. We talked about everything, uh, but did not we did not say a word about that. Uh, and then, you know, uh, email went out. Uh, some guys came down to me, but they everybody. Knows. I mean, it's just 
you know, everybody gets the same email. And it's just, I guess it's just the way you were, were structured that, uh, but, you know, there was a couple, couple, uh, a couple people came in the office. It's okay, let's go. We gotta get back to work. Uh, you, you don't have time I mean, to, uh, to sit there and worry about it. everything. Every, you know, well, what's what's going to happen here? What's going to happen? You just don't have time. I think. I know that sounds crazy, but you don't sit by the coffee cup in the football staff meetings and staff rooms and discuss that because you got so much. Uh, you know, when you're working 80 hours a week, 90 hours a week, you just don't you don't have time to, to do any of that. The chancellor said the decision was made primarily because he was a distraction. How much of a distraction was it for your staff and players? None. You know, I just you know I, I know the outside looks at it that there's so many distractions that are going on. The inside looks at it and sits there to get to work. Uh, and I know that sounds really crazy um, because of all the stuff that's going on, but I can honestly say, that, I mean, that's all we do. I mean, we just, and I, I still keep on going back. If I waste, if I waste or spend five minutes on anything else besides getting a game plan, getting everything done for these student athletes, I'm, I'm not doing my job. I've been in these situations. I've been, you know, I've been where the, the head coach was in Florida. The guy was let go mid-season, University of Central Florida, mid-season. Uh, I've been where there's a lot of conjecture about what, what's going to happen. Uh, you know, you just the bottom line is if you skill, if you keep on thinking about the student athletes, you, you won't do that. And then uh, it's just the exact same way. Uh, you know, I do. I think. Uh, you know, are we are we probably getting our fair share of uh, what the outside people may say distractions? Yes, but I also think we're handling it pretty well, and I think that says it's been, you know the true character of our football team and really the coaches. What will your message be to the team today? See them both about what happened with Mike Thomas today and about playing the team in the nation that everyone considers to be the number one team. Well, uh, the number one is that you know. I'll mention it to them, but I mean, you're talking about 18 to 22 year old guys. I mean, the, I mean, I, we've got some guys that have played for five offensive line coaches. You know, so you know they're they're, they're pretty strong. You know, and we, and, we, and we try to make them strong. You know, we talk a lot about you know our number one th one of our number one thing or thing, not num number one, but number one thing. Don't flinch. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen every day of life. Something's going to happen out there. How you handle that? Uh, and we talk about don't flinch. So, and we talk, we talk more in football terms uh, during the games, getting ready for the game. But there's going to be there's going to be curveballs thrown all the time. That, that you, you know how you going to handle it. And I'm I'm most proud of our, our uh, players the way they're handling everything else. Uh, now you know that now you got to get, get get them get them back to Ohio State. You know when you're going to put them put on that film. And, uh, there's a lot of lot of all American draft picks running around. Okay, how are you going to handle it? I mean, you still got to put the ball down there. You still got to play the game. So, they just let's, let's just go play. You know, and I think people gave us up for dead, uh, you know, right after uh, the Penn State game. I, shoot, I knew better. You know, and, and then when you look back, you know, I could sit up there, you know, you know, we got four losses. Well, you know, go back and see what the records are of those four teams. You know, go back there and see that there's three teams in the top. And three of the losses are in the top 23 in the country, and two of them we took down the basically the wire. You know, uh, we played, we played, we have played two bad games at Penn State. We played uh, North Carolina. I think we played real well, even though we were in it, you know, early. Uh, so, but why do these kids keep kids, kids keep going bouncing back? I, I know why. You know, because there's great character on, on the football program right now. So, we'll, we'll, we'll battle, we'll fight. So the guys that are here are resilient. They can take four, four or five O-line coaching changes. But on the recruiting trail, you're probably going to face some questions about, you know, the revolving door in athletics administration, the revolving door in overall university administration. All the time. I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, and again, I've been where you you think you're you're uh, everybody's going to be okay, uh, but the people out there that are they're competing against you, they're always in that. There's very rarely, but one thing I'll, I'll tell you, okay, everywhere I go, 
every play I talk, even this past game, I had four coaches come up to me and say, Coach, you know what? Your kids are playing as hard as I've ever seen them play. And you know what? Uh, you deserve, you know, you guys deserve a lot of credit in how you're handling this whole thing there. So nobody, nobody could sit out there and say, hey, they're not playing hard. Well, that's a true indication of really coaching, right? Nobody can really go out there and say, hey, these guys are really, boy, they're really getting bad without coach, because that's not happening. And so, you know what, well, we got we got a pretty good leg to stand on. Now, yeah, I know there's a little issues there, but I'm sitting there and I, and I, like I told, told somebody today, you know, right now I'm the head coach and I'm going to act like the head coach, okay? I'm going to recruit like the head coach. I'm going to coach like the head coach, right? And, I, and I'm going to go out there and do everything I can possibly do for these kids. Well, the, the, the message that's getting to these recruits is the same way. How many guys will we lost? How many guys, guys will we have gained you know, since, since this whole thing happened? And I do know there's a lot of kids out there just waiting because um, I've talked to them. You, know, you give that message out there right, that, that, uh, that, you're, that you come to a place, okay, you come to one of the great institutions in the, in the world, one of, 20, one, you know, one of the top 20, 24, 23 institutions in the world. You're going to play good, and you're going to get coach positive, and you're going to watch. You're going to watch games. I mean, I, like I said, I can't tell you how many texts I'm getting. Boy, your kids, boy, they fight. And uh, who, who doesn't want to join a program like that? You know, and then build. You know, you know I, I've never been one. But I've walked into a situation where they've been at the top. It's never happened to me in my whole coaching career. I've been involved in. I, I took a job and there was 34 straight losses. Well, you know how much how much pride I had. You know, when, we, when we turned that thing around, okay, took over a program. Okay, I can't tell you how many times. One and eleven. Bam. Next year we're, we're seven and four, and uh, it's fine. It's a lot of fun. That's a, that's the message I'm saying. Right? Just you know, and uh, you know, I'll tell you another little story. You know, just, you know, we took a kid, okay, that that, that uh, had a rough upbringing, okay, has done everything he's asked him to do. Okay, he worked 12, 14 hours a day trying to get himself into a better spot. Well, today, okay, I just got a uh, uh, package today, um, a FedEx package. So how Ward just got uh, you know, a pick for the senior bowl. Are you? How can you not? How can you not love that stuff? Mm -hmm. uh, that kid came in. He was speechless. I'm speechless. We're uh, you know, and golly, I mean, ain't nobody gonna stop stop this. When you said that people are, are waiting, re recruits are waiting, are you saying that they're waiting for the interim to be removed from your title? I don't know if they will wait a while. You know, it, it's, a, it's, it's not really, you know, it's not my decision, but I'm going you know, to go out there and, you know, this is where I'm at. I mean, they got the a head coach there, okay, and, you know, you know, right behind the head coach, they say Bill Q. Well, that's my ob obligation to this university and, the, and to these kids. And uh, until they tell me no, Battle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight just like those kids are fighting out there. I'm gonna do exactly what they're doing. And, uh, and if I did it in a way, shame on me. Uh, they should just they, take, get, get me out of here. Mm -hmm. But I ain't happy. When you, when you're recruiting those kids, though, they're, they're asking you, are you gonna be your coach? No. Nope. They're not asking you that. I don't know why. I bring it up first. You know, hey, just trust me. You know, just keep following. Me. All right, just keep following this football team. Something you like, then guess what? It's a pretty good place. You know, you talk about the academic piece. You, you talk about our players. Talk about how we treat guys. Okay, hey, you just hang in there with me. All right, that's all I ask. And guess what? They're still accepting the phone calls every week. There's, they're, there's, they're still talking to us. Okay, and you know, we, we got a visit list in uh, December. Mm -hmm. Pretty good kids there coming in. Inspected head coach. Do I expect it? Yeah, I expect it. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I did it any other way, it'd be wrong. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a part-time guy. I'm not a guy that's going to sit around, okay, and hope something happens. I mean, I've never been that way. I'm, you know, I always say, go make it happen. And, uh, you know, for the same way with these kids. I mean, go make this thing happen. I mean, who else, who else in this country has been, you know, this football team, these players have gone as much, uh, as much through as, as what our kids have. And they're still going out there, all right, doing everything they can do. You know, we had one one bad hiccup. You know. Well, there's a lot of teams that have bad hiccups out there. Okay. Do they fight? Yeah, these kids are fighting.
I, I fully expect them to play tonight. I, I can't wait to practice. I mean, I just, you know, I'm about as energized as I've, I've been in a long, long time. Because when people tell you you can't do things, all right. <coughs> it's kind of got my upbringing. You know, I've been told a lot of times I couldn't do things. I mean, way back in there. Though a lot of people might look at the situation and say, what, what's going on down there in that athletic department? Just what has been your experience outside of the team with this athletic department? Really haven't had much. You know, it, it's been all support. You know, Jason Leonard uh, has been coming out there every single day, comes out there and gives us support. Uh, Matt Leonard, another one, comes out there every single day. You know, they're, I mean, they, they want everything just like we do. I mean, uh, you know, they're, you know it, it, it looks... It looks from the outside, but if you you go in that little that little area that we're in right now, uh, you know, go, go in the quad. You know, go go see go see the students out there. They're so excited about what's going on. When, when's the last time you get the block the block high? Yeah. Somebody says, "Well, you know, are you going to have them be I don't know, right. but you know, I'm going to be back on the quad and you know, growling those around the people again. And how many people sat there? You know. I mean, there's people in here. I mean, you're not going to be Purdue. All right, well, what happened there? What was your reaction to the report finally getting out, clearing most of the assistance of any wrongdoing? Uh, you know, to be honest, I, I spent, I think, two minutes on it. You know, somebody gave me where, uh, you know, it, it, the one part, you know, where they had the assistant coaches, you know, I looked at that, you know, for a short time, went right back to the, to the tape there. Uh, you know, you know, my, my, my thing, my goal has always been is to make the, make the experience of the student athlete, you know, as best as can be, you know, and, 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 try, and try to dry your heart out. You know, um, you know it's, I'll, I'll, I, that's, what, that's what I've always tried to do. As a coach, do you have any concern, or is there a reason maybe to be concerned with an interim chancellor, an interim athletic director, interim head football coach? Just there's a little uncertainty there. There's nothing I could do. I mean, it really is. I mean, I just, you know, I, I you know, again, you know, a lot of experience. Uh, I think that I think I think you need a lot of experience in this job here. Uh, I think you got to know the landscape. I think you got to know what's going. on. What's, what's happening here, uh, and so uh, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't worry about. It. I, I, I don't, I don't worry about all the outside factors. I just worry about, you know, what I can do for these players, and then, uh, and then, then, then just go from there. How long do you know Paul Kowalczyk? Uh, just, just a little, you know, as an as an assistant, you don't get to, you know, you don't, you don't get to externally, you don't get out there as much. I think. You know this this experience here for the last uh, you know eight nine weeks. You know there's been a lot. You know we have to go out there and do a lot more externally. Uh, you know I know he's a good man. You know and again I know he's got the best interests of Illinois, uh, just like you know, almost you know, everybody around here. Everybody wants it to, to be to be a good good experience. And uh, so you know I'm sure he'll do an absolutely fantastic job, just like. You know, Chancellor and the President and everybody else connected with this place. Everybody wants the same thing. How often were you meeting with Uh Once a week. Yeah, every uh, Wednesday or uh, yeah, Wednesday morning. Good, good relationship with him, obviously, right there. Yeah, yeah I, I, you know, I try to get along with everybody. Even that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I, I just love the experience. I mean, I just, uh, you know, it, it was nice to talk to. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been good. I don't, I don't have any issues. Ever. Given that you're the, you know, in the head coach role now and you've been a head coach before, did, to what extent do you look back at some of the things that come up in the report regarding Tim and, and treatment of players and interaction with medical staff to, to try and maybe move the needle a little bit to get guys on the field? Yeah. Um, you know, do, do you feel like you should have seen some of those things? Well, you know, a lot of it, it's... Uh, you know, 
and I can just say when I was the head coach before uh, other places, uh, a lot of it was between me and the trainer uh, because I don't, you know, I didn't really want a lot of people involved. I thought it was it was important that the trainer was conveying his message to one guy. My message was uh, to convey it to the rest of the staff, whether in, out, you know, what's going on, uh, treatment-wise, whatever. That was, that was my style. Um, so I, I very rarely it was our staff. All the staff I had to know was, uh, is he is he out? How can he practice if he was in a different color jersey or whatever? So that was that was always been my style because the more people that were that were in there uh, get voice their opinions. There's only really one opinion that matters. That's the trainer, and I and the trainer. Okay, who's getting it from the doctor? And the guy was out. He was out. And so that's how I did it before. I guess I didn't answer your question. Do you find yourself though looking back? Even now, and thinking, you know, were, were there things that I, I, I saw or, or should have seen, or, or should you have been aware, of, given that you were a coordinator and, and maybe there's some elevated responsibility there? Yeah. No, it's, a, it's the same thing. Because what happens is they go into, they, you know, it's a staff meeting, they go in, the trainer goes in, and he gives a report every single day uh, whether, whether, what the status is, whether he's out, okay, what kind of treatment he's getting, um, you know, where, where he goes. Okay, as far as like tests and stuff like that, you know, there's going to be on there, you know, I get a test, you know, MRI or whatever. Uh, but you never question as a system. I mean, it's just because, you know, there are the people that are the experts there. So, um, you know, you, you just don't, I mean, that's, that's kind of how it is in, 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 the, in the college football world. Coach, what about during practices and games when in the report it says Coach Beckman would berate players for going to see the trainer? Mm -hmm. And saying that they're quitting on the team, saying that they're soft. Did you ever feel like that was too far for them? You no, know, I think, and I'm going to tell you the same thing I told you. You know, if you've ever been in practice, okay, I'm on the offensive side, okay. Uh, so very rarely do we ever. And then once the once the the period start, okay, we we practice actually at headquarters, okay. So um, it'd be like you 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 sitting in here with uh, with your headphones. Okay, or uh, I don't even know what they call them now, but give me, give me what the new headphones are. It used to be Vogue's me. Beats. Uh, Beats. Beats, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that's how far, that's all. But anyway, so the headphones will be on there. Okay, I'm looking at a script of paper. Okay, and I'm, I'm calling the place. All right. As I can't even hear the quarterback. Okay, I can't even hear the coaches. Uh, the coaches are on the, on the headsets. All right, and that's how practice is. Okay, and and that's that's the way it was. I mean, that goes from period four all the way to the end of practice. To clarify, you're saying that you were not aware? No. Okay. Yeah. Can I get a last Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the Buckeyes? Yeah, yeah real quick. Um, Urban Meyer just announced JC Barrett will be the starter. Uh, what are you expecting from our offense? A great player. I mean, I think he, the, he, uh, he does a lot for him. I think in red zone, he's really, you know, uh, you know, statistics will show. Cardell is an outstanding guy. I mean, he took him to the national championship. So, um, you know, I think they're both really, really good players. You know, uh, but JT is—he's uh, dangerous. I mean, he's a dangerous guy. He played, we saw him up close last time we played him. Uh, and then Cardell came in at the end. And, uh, so, but you know what else helps? You know, their, their offensive line is really good. Uh, the wide receivers are really good. Uh, they got a Heisman Trophy candidate at uh, running back. He's really good. Got a lot of really good players. If you win, are you the head coach? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I told my wife, we, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. finish that. Uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't really think about it. I, I, you know, I know it sounds crazy, right? but you know, I, I just, been, I've just been brought up to keep the distractions, keep them out. You know, and, and there's nothing I can do. You know, the only thing I could do is what's what's out there in the field and how, how our uh, player uh, player experience is, and that's what I'm going to be. I mean, that's what everybody's going to look at. So if I take one minute, two minutes, or a half a day doing nothing, and, I, and I've seen this. I mean, I've seen guys who got interims and all they did was politic for the job, or they forgot to do the job they were actually supposed to do, and then it never works out. You know, it's just you know, just not not going to do that. You know, it's just not fair to not fair.
there are these players. And, you know, this isn't the first rodeo I've been in where it's been a, you know, there, there happened to be an interim coach coming. Um, you know, it's, a, and so you'll learn from experience, you know, on how guys handle it. Some guys handle it really, really well. Uh, and I'm talking about staff, too. Uh, you know, I've been on staffs where, you know, like all of a sudden the guy gets let go and nine doors are closed, you know, because everybody's trying to find a job, feeding their family. I understand all that, point, but it doesn't do you any good. I mean, you know, but, but, you know, you are who you are. If you go out there and you do a great job and you coach those kids, you know, a lot of times that works out. So, yes. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> just, I'm just, uh, we're, 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 you know, when you, when you come, when you see that Purdue game, you see Josh Ferguson, you see all those kids having so much fun. I mean, if you can't figure that out, you don't belong. And there's a lot of guys that have not figured that out yet, right? Because it's all about the, 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 the players. Right? It's not about you. We have any uh, questions from the phone lines for Coach Cubitt? Um, I have a couple. I'm sorry if it's a repeat because I didn't hear the question very well. But um, I guess, you know, some of the report talks about just the um, overall, I guess, culture of the program. And you talk a lot about being – Positive. I'm sure some of that's just naturally who you are, but how much do you feel that there needed to be a change in just how maybe these players were addressed or just the overall culture to have you know, more positive feedback or a positive culture around the program? A lot. You know, I thought that, uh, you know, being being here a few years, you know, it's, a, it's got, uh, you know, some negativity has creeped in. If we don't think it creeps into our players, you know, we're, we're really kidding ourselves. And I still think a happy player is a lot better player than, than a guy that's not happy. And, uh, you know, so that's that's kind of been the approach. Uh, and I thought it was much needed. And I think it has showed uh, where we've had some downs. After the North Carolina game, we came right back up. Um, you know, after the Penn State game, we came right back up. Well, unhappy players will not bounce back like that. And as far as... Um your position there. Do you, do you feel like you've done enough now to secure the job, and or do you feel like these last few games are still needed as a chance to prove yourself? Uh, you know, Chad. I, you know, I don't. You know, I know it sounds great. I don't. I don't look at it that way. You know, it's. Uh, you know, on Sunday come in. Uh, I, I got to get a game plan ready. Uh, Monday got to get a game plan ready, and. Uh, you know, the, you know, is there a tendency sometimes? Oh, well, you know, we do this or do that. You know, probably when you when you're by yourself and late at night, you can't get to sleep. But you know, then it, then it just comes a realization it doesn't do you any good. And I think that's where you know the experience uh, really creeps in. Uh, there's a lot of experience that you know I've seen. I mean, I've, I've been with great coaches, you know, Lou Saban, Larry Smith, Galen Hall, and all those guys. You know, just see them. You, you, you know, you, you listen to them. You know, and they, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, two of them are, have passed. But the guy like Galen Hall, you know, just texting you. You know, hey, look, you just keep on going. All right, the kids are looking great. They're playing hard. You get those texts. You know, Dave Tobe at Kansas City Chief. Man, it's fun watching your guys play. You know, that's what drives. That's what drives you, um, because people out outside are looking at how our kids are playing well. And if I, if I take anything away from that, then uh, I'm not doing my job. And uh, uh, so uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep plugging until they, uh, you know, one time, you know, whether it's, you know, whenever it happens, you know, hopefully it's uh, a long time uh, before they say, but I'm not, I'm battling. I'm, I'm going to fight. Anything else from the phone lines? Final questions here in the room. Um, hey. One of the things the report talks about is uh, some of the negativity with wearing purple jerseys in practice for injury. I know that that's since been done away with, but there's still some signs that are negative Northwestern. I mean, do you still, you know, okay with that? Everything's fine with that in terms of culture? You have, don't see any issues with that? Well, I, I think if, if it's done if it's done with a uh, uh, respect, you know, I respect that uh, I respect Northwestern. It's not a, it's not an ugly thing. You know, it's a, it's a last game in a year. You know, I think when you go the landscape of college football, Auburn, Alabama, 
you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that are more interested in that game. If it was Auburn and San Jose, I mean, people would be, be interested in that. So, um, you know, we, we've taken the, the, the personal things away, okay, and now it's, a, you know, they give a trophy out. Um, so why do you play the game? You know, because, because it's a big game. You know, so, but, you know, it, do I respect Northwestern? Yeah. I respect Fitzy. Yeah. You know. Fitzy was one of the first guys, okay, when this thing happened, and he texted me. And uh, you know, we, we've had a pretty long relationship. And uh, I was uh, well, we didn't even have a game in Western Michigan. We, we couldn't even get a schedule, you know, in around uh, June. I didn't even have a game. I called him up because uh, somebody had just dropped in. He was Vanderbilt. And, uh, yeah. Let's, let's go play. And so that's how they got that game because of the relationship. So, yeah, I, I, I don't, uh, I, as long as it's out of respect, I think it's, you know, I think it's a good thing. Bill, after Tim got fired, you said the community could rally around this team. Do you, do you feel like that could be the case here Saturday? Uh, yes, yeah, it, and, it, and it really has. I mean, when I go to the radio show, uh, you know, you go to, and I'm not being a jerk, but I mean, you go into the quarterback club and, you know, Against Wisconsin, you know, when people give you a stand ovation, it's not me; it's the, the way the kids are playing. Uh, so I, I think everybody is rallying around. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I've heard I can't tell you any comments. You know, we go home. We, you know, the few moments I had with Nancy, and you know, we sit there and we talk. And you know, hey, you know, hey, I just got this email. I got this. Uh, got the thing going. I mean, we really do. And uh, you know, like I, you know, I mentioned Saturday. You know. How close were we? Okay, you know, with the, the two teams that are ranked uh, ranked in the top 23, ones that the, with the eight, you know, and, with, without some players. You know, so uh, you, know, you got to give the players credit, and that's what it's all about. That's why if you're alum, okay, it's not who the coach is, it's who's out there playing. And these kids, you know, they came here, they could have chose a lot of different schools. They came here because they, they believed in the world. <coughs> To be honest with you, that's why I came here, because I believe in this place. And I stayed here because I believe in this place. And, uh, so, you know, you got to rally around. And if, we, if we all can use that, right, and rally around, I mean, how good can Illinois be? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going out there saying, you know what, pretty good. Because, uh, you know, we just got to keep keep being positive. Right? I'm, I'm not being negative. I'm not doing that. And the, our kids aren't doing that either. I mean, if you watch the Penn State game, I mean, you talk to the guys. I mean, they were they, they were they were really really disappointed, and, uh, and they were disappointed because they didn't play really well. But they could have backed down. They didn't. Bill, I think you you didn't mention whether you talked to Mike Thomas today. Have you talked to Mike yes. Thomas today? What did you? Thank them. Yeah. You know, people people have been really good to me here. Yeah. I mean, so. You know, I'm, I'm not going to sit there, right, and all of a sudden, you know, just step away. I'm, I'm just not doing it. You know, I, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, we were in the indoor uh, two weeks ago, and uh, there was a man out there working his butt off, trying to get the get the uh, field in, in shape in the indoor. I just wanted to thank him. Well, he comes out on Twitter, and, you know, he makes a little comment. Hey, the head coach came up and, and said, thanks a lot. And if we continue doing that stuff, you know, just being good people, Right? And being positive, how I mean, we, we got a chance. And, uh, and Mike, and Mike was good to me. I mean, he, he trusted me. To, you know, when, when, when it went down in the first place. So I thank him. Yeah. I hope he's doing. I hope he's doing good. A couple of weeks ago, you talked about your relationship with Jerry Kill, mm -hmm. and he worked for Paul Kowalczyk. Do you expect to talk with him about what it's like working for Paul Kowalczyk? No, I didn't know that. You know, so uh, I probably will preach. I think we, you know, I talked to Coach. But we got we were going back and forth with Coach Kill about a week ago, and uh, he said he was going down to Florida. Told me to wear a hat. Uh, he's going down there. It seems like that's where a lot of people go. You know, things go. You just go relax. Uh, no, I didn't know that, but uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Coach Kill has a lot of good things to say about Paul. Jeremy, our trainer, has worked with uh, with Paul. Speaks for very, very highly. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Go on.